Hello, welcome to your lecture on Ines. Um, not a lot that we're really going to have to know here. Uh, a little, I want you to be familiar with the uh, symptoms so that you don't miss this diagnosis because the way that it's going to present is going to be very strange with things kind of coming and going and one minute they're fine and the next minute they're um, have uh, weakness or double vision and those kinds of things. So it's a diagnosis that's made by exclusion, but also it's a diagnosis that can not be made for many years, which is very disturbing for the patient. 300,000 in the U.S., uh, 10,000 uh, new per year. There's a million worldwide. The age of onset is 20 to 40 with a peak around the age of 30. There's a very low incidence in children under the age of six, but it does exist. Uh, the uh, female to male ratio is anywhere from two to one or three to one, depending on uh, what source that you look at. It's highest in Caucasian, it's uh, lowest in Asians and African Americans. Pathophysiology, it's a chronic inflammation and demyelination, demyelination of the CNS. The myelin is broken down uh, by lymphocytes ingested by macrophages and that results in damage and atrophy of the axons. And this uh, causes plaque formation and it occurs in various stages in white matter of the brain, the spinal cord, and the optic nerve. One of the things that we're going to uh, learn about um, or that's going on with the research right now is uh, whether or not an MRI actually uh, diagnoses um, MS. And again, this is similar to Alzheimer's when we talked about that and that some people will have these plaques and they're obvious in the brain, but they have no symptoms and, and vice versa. So um, it is a way of, of looking at it. Classification is undergoing um, change. Again, we're learning a lot about this disease and there's a lot of research right now. When you search for articles, they're very hard to find uh, on MS. MS that is um, relapsing and remitting has the best prognosis. Inflammation phases early in the disease and that's usually when you get uh, remitting and relapsing. The neural generation uh, phase is later and tends to be more progressive. But again, some people have the relapsing and remitting from the beginning and other people have the more severe from the beginning. Possible risk factors, genetic vulnerability, so it does tend to run in families, exposure to environmental triggers, infectious agents, um, host immune responses directed against the CNS. And again, there's still a lot that we don't know. Secondary uh, prevention, a recent change in thinking, um, early use of uh, immunomodulators to hit inflation, inflammation and delay early progression. Um, the FDA approved a new drug called Avonex and it produced a 44% reduction rate uh, in the second attack, but we still have a lot to learn. Tertiary is just to delay disability and maintain function. Subjective findings, and again, this is going to be um, what leads you to MS as long as it's kind of in the back of your mind somewhere. The symptoms are very variable. There's chronic fatigue. There can be double uh, vision. This usually tends to happen uh, on one side. They have some problems with the fifth cranial nerve when you check that. Uh, visual disturbances, double vision, blurred vision, uh, eye pain. They have um, trouble with bladder control. Uh, they have um, urgency. They have urinary tract infections from retention of urine. They have reproductive um, sexual dysfunction, lack of lubrication. Subjective finding, they have some constipation, uh, psychosocial, later have some emotional liability and depression, and that's probably more related to um, the problems with um, having a normal life progression. A cognition, some memory and abstract reasoning again. So you get into these some of these neurodiagnosis, and it's really hard to know which ones are related to medications that they're taking and which are related to the disease process. Uh, symptoms are uh, intensified by heat. You want to do, of course, HENT and look at neuro for gait, balance, DTRs are often increased. You want to check muscle strength. You want to do your MMSE. Again, you are ruling out uh, any kind of mental or cognitive uh, deficits. 
there is something called uh, INO, which is bilateral internuclear um, ophthalmoplasia. And basically, the articles will tell you that if you see this in a young person, that it's virtually diagnostic of MS. When the gaze is forward, it looks normal, but when you have the patient look to the right, the right eye develops abducting nystagmus, and the left eye cannot full, fully abduct. When the patient looks to the left, the left eye has abducting nystagmus, and the right eye cannot fully um, adduct. And again, I have not seen this, so it's really hard to um, describe to you guys exactly how it may look, but that's what the articles will tell you. Diagnostic criteria is at least two attacks involving two areas of the CNS. Neural signs in at least two areas of the CNS, such as optic pallor, spasticity of the limbs, ataxia. It is a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that no disease can better explain the signs and symptoms. Lots of times these are people that have been to the doctors on and off for years for different things uh, related to the symptoms, and because they have periods of remission, then they tend to uh, have trouble with the diagnosis. Differential diagnosis can be lots of different things, lupus, Lyme disease, you think about a tumor. Again, diagnostics in your newest articles disagree with this a little bit, but MRI CP is the gold standard still for diagnosis. You can also look at the cerebral spinal fluids for uh, bands. The MRI can record the volume and number of plaques in the brain. It's fairly accurate. Uh, plaques are visible in 90% of those with symptoms, and because it's not, that's what makes some problems with uh, it being your only diagnostic, but it's the best that we have at this point. Um, interventions, um, especially for acute flare-ups, can be corticosteroids, 60 to 80 milligrams uh, daily for a week, and then taper. There would be some problems with this, of course, for long-term use. The immunomodulators, there's five at present. Um, the cost is around 10000 per year, so it's a very expensive. You want to treat with uh, emotional support, treat urinary tract infections. Um, they're also, uh, you know, going to have problems with constipation and other things like that that they can tend to come and see you. So uh, it's a lot like your patient with Parkinson's in that you're probably not going to be the primary manager of this. You may be the person who diagnoses it, and then the neurologist will take care of it, but then you will see them for other problems related to the medications or related to the symptoms. Collaborative, of course, your neurologist, your physical therapist, uh, home health, social services. Um, very early on, they continue employment that may at some point, they may not be able to care for self. Uh, no cure, so you do your symptoms uh, as best you can. The article's pretty good. Uh, again, not a lot of stuff written out there currently about MS.